Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost is in this house. Y'all will make me get in trouble. My husband said, go down and say the Easter speech and sit down. Don't do nothing else. <laughs> my God. My God. My God. My God. It is a great pleasure to be here today. I bring you greetings for the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, the church on the hill where... Amen. Amen. Our pastor... Our pastor is my husband, a um, very fine man, a very good man, a very awesome man, a very loving man, and uh, he's my cream in my coffee, Pastor Claude Franklin. Amen. I, I love to talk about him, y'all. I have to talk about him. I tell them all the time at Pleasant Grove, they said, one, they call me Rated R. And number two, they say, do you love that man? I said, well, I understand that everybody coming to church ain't coming to hear the word. This is women day, ain't it? And if you don't learn to validate him, Bone Queequee may be out there and they'll validate him. Hey, man, I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave. Y'all going to, I'm going to behave. Hey, Amen. But I love me some Pastor Claude Franklin. And he loved him some elder charlotte franklin amen amen so i thank god for him in his absence uh i've been away from the house i've slowed down for COVID, and he was like oh lord have mercy and everything to take my wife away from me again but uh we thank god for just allowing him to uh, let me come amen because he does he can easily say no but uh, I thank God that he's not jealous of what God has given me. And I'm not jealous of what God has given him. Amen. Amen. And I have been to school and seminary and I do know pulpit etiquette. And so let me, let me back up and, and thank God for the Moses and the angel of this house. Pastor Marcus Glover. Amen. Let's praise God for Pastor Glover. Amen. Amen. I've, I've also learned that you cannot praise God for the men of God without praising God for the woman of God that walks beside him. Our first lady, Lady Glover. She's a bad man, Majama, y'all. She's a bad man, Majama. That chick got out of the car I'm like, God, man. Man, she's bad. Listen, listen. We have to learn how to validate each other. Come on, somebody. We're not living in a time where it's time to be jealous. Come on. I learned to validate because that sister look good. Come on. It ain't nothing funny about me, but she looks good. Amen. And this is the lady of the house. Amen. Let's praise God for the woman of the house today. Thank God for our beautiful first lady. When I grow up, I'm going to look just like that. Amen. 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 Thank God for dad sharing with us on today. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. And we thank God for the woman of God uh, praying for me back here. Amen. God bless you. And uh, yo, I brought my Amma Bearer traveling with me. She goes everywhere and drives and listen to me fuss all the way, back, all the way here. <laughs> Saying, slow down. Let him leave us. Slow down. So I thank God for Tay, for Sharon, beautiful. It's hard working with me, but she, she the only one can put up with me, so I thank God for her. Listen, I love Women Day and Women Conference. Now, with me, you can't wear your feelings on your shoulder, amen? Because I'm just going to tell you what the Lord said, and then I'm going to sit down, amen? Pastor Franklin said, Elder, he said, listen, I said, honey, any special instructions today? He said, yeah, what I tell you all the time. And I said, what's that? He said, say it and sit down. So I'm going to be obedient to Pastor Franklin. We just go say it and sit down. And I know some of you are saying, wait a minute now, but what if God said, well, I do know that God created marriages before he created ministry. See, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't with me today. And so that's why I honor the man of God. Amen. Amen. Um, if you have your Bibles, 
We won't be long. I'm not a long preacher. If you have your Bibles, uh, go to Mark. Mark chapter 5 with me. And while you're doing that, I want to tell y'all, y'all look good. Y'all look good. Y'all set this women's day in order. I'm talking about, oh, y'all look good. Y'all women ought to stand up and put your hand on your hip and say, I can't help. God made me a woman. Come on, somebody. You got to learn to have an attitude. See, too many times we're waiting for a man to validate us, honey. You better get in that mirror and validate yourself. What? I can't help it. I get up every morning and put on a scrub and go, golly, that girl bad. Come on, because, because I don't need a man to validate me. God validated me. He validated me when he woke me up. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to have some church with me. I love to have a good time. Amen. And it ain't nothing wrong with looking good. Amen. If you got it, you just got it. Come on. Look at your neighbor and say, girl, I got this thing. Mm-hmm. Mark chapter 5. See, some of y'all, y'all want to be cute, but you're going to do it when you get home. You're going to be like. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Heavenly Father, we come down with a bowed head and a humble heart. Lord, I go all the way down that you may come all the way up in me. Lord, however you see fit to use me, use me today, God. Father God, I dare not do what I want to do, and I dare not say what I want to say. Lord, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father God, I pray today that you will save somebody, you will sanctify somebody, and you will set somebody free on today. God, we'll be so careful to give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5. Verse 35, Mark chapter 5 and verse 35 says, when you have it, say, I have the word. word. If you need me to wait up, say, wait up. Amen. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why trouble? thy master in the father. As soon as Jesus heard that, that, that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Elder, Franklin, Elder Franklin, top it today. Top it, today. It, ain't over it ain't over till God says it's over. Amen. Look at your neighbor and encourage somebody behind you and say, it ain't over. To God says it's over. Listen, I come to encourage somebody who's feeling down and who uh, about to make a major decision in their life and just feel like everything in their life is going wrong. Today, I come to tell you that it ain't over. To God says it over. You may have someone with COVID or uh, even laying up in the hospital, but God says today, go tell them, Charlotte, that it ain't over. To God says it's over. Amen. Now, you have to understand the Bible. You have to understand that the Bible is not written in chronological order because we're dealing here with the gospel here. Mark is one of the gospel. And in the Bible, they put Mark as the second gospel. But if you really research this text or really research the Bible, you can find out that Mark should have been the first gospel because here Mark now introduced uh, Jesus' ministry. Come on, somebody. Uh, it really, Mark here says, in the, in, uh, I'm just going to walk y'all up to where I'm at. Is that all right? In Mark chapter 1, here it is. The Bible says that John the Baptist was teaching the disciples. And, and, and John, I, I'm sorry, John the Baptist was out teaching the people. And he says to the people, he said, listen, there's one that's coming after me. He says that there's one that's coming that shoes that I'm not even able or worthy to untie. Come on, somebody. The Bible says then Jesus comes on the throne. And the Bible says after John the Baptist has baptized the people, 
people, he first says, y'all got to repent and turn from your wicked ways. And then the Bible says that these people turned from their wicked ways and they were baptized. The Bible even talks about, I'm just walking you up to where I'm, we're going to get there in a minute. You just stay right there. We're going to go home in just a second. Listen, the text says that these people, that John the Baptist said, listen, y'all, here comes Jesus now. The Bible says that Jesus comes on the throne. And when Jesus shows up, the text says the first thing that John the Baptist did was baptize him. The Bible says that Jesus was baptized, but something happened when he came up out of the water. Had anything ever happened to anybody when they came up out of the water come on the bible said that the heaven opened come on somebody and god began to speak wait a minute this is my son whom i love dearly come on somebody but the thing about it pastor the people still did not believe that he was the son of god what are you saying elder well i'm glad you asked there were leaders there was those pharisees there was the leaders of the church yet been coming to church sunday after sunday and still didn't believe do we got any believers in the house Listen, the Bible says that now, I'm just, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. The Bible says that uh, Jesus went through this, this particular gospel, not trying to just do miracles, y'all, but he was trying to convince the disciples, come on somebody, because these disciples were walking with him daily, and they still did not believe. Every time that God did something, the Bible even come back and say they were so amazed. Come on somebody. They got blew their mind. His thing was to teach them that uh, that he was the God, he was the Son of God, Amen. So that they can go out in the world, come on, somebody, and 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 tell the people, listen, come on on this side, uh, cause Jesus is the way, Amen. But first of all, before you can tell anything, you got to be a believer. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you believe? Listen, I now hear the Holy Ghost. Listen, the text goes on. Here we are. We have the text now. The Bible says that he went through and he performed miracles. Y'all remember he healed. Uh, uh, Peter said, listen, okay, Jesus, I tell you what, you come on and go on home with me. The Bible says that when they get to Peter's house, come on, somebody, Peter, mother-in-law, was sick. Come on. And so the Bible even talks about how he touched her and he healed her. Amen. And when she got healed, one of the things she did was got up. Somebody said got up and begin to minister to Jesus. Amen. How many of you waking up in the morning and ministering to Jesus? Listen, that was not all the miracles he did. In this text today, now I'm where I want to be. In this text today, this text Mark 5, Mark 5 deals with a demon man. Somebody say a demon man. This text here deals with a diseased woman. Somebody say a diseased woman. And then uh, this text also deals with a dead girl. Somebody say a dead girl. Ah, uh, y'all, come on. I know y'all some Bible readers. I love to have a good time, but I love this word too. Jesus and his disciples had just came over to, uh, from the city called Galilee. The text says that uh, when they got there, Jesus was still trying his best to uh, convince the disciples that he was the son of God. But apparently they did not believe, but they were yet afraid. I'll prove it to you in the text. They were afraid. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Bible states that they came out of the storm. They had just came out of a storm. Y'all know in Mark chapter 4, the Bible says that they were in a storm. And they were so afraid that they woke Jesus up and said, hey, we in this storm. The Bible says Jesus got up and said, hey, wait a minute. He calmed the storm and said, y'all be not afraid. You may be in a storm right now, but I come to tell you, be not afraid. Just believe. Come on, somebody. Somebody look at somebody and say, it ain't over. Till God says it's over. In the Bible, it states that uh, they got up, they came out of the storm. And when they came out of the storm, Jesus entered into the city and started preaching the good news. He wanted the world to know that he was the son of the most high. And all they had to do is believe. Somebody say believe. He wanted, to know the, wanted the people to know that all power was in his hand. It was a good thing because he had the power. And what he wanted to do is deliver power to you and I. Come on, somebody. 
Uh, Jesus had the power, number one, to deliver. Come on, somebody. Jesus had the power, number two, is to heal. And Jesus had the power to raise the dead. Oh, you got to be with me now because I'm about ready to go home right here. Listen, when Jesus had the disciple to reach the uh, the Jesus and the disciple reached over the other side. They met four people that were in need. Y'all with me? I'm in the text. Mark chapter 5. Listen, it says that they met four, four people that were in need of help. Number one, they met a man with a demon. Y'all remember the man with a demon? Come on, somebody. Not only did they meet a man with a demon, but then they also uh, 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 met a desperate father. Come on, somebody. They met this demon man, but then they met this desperate father. And then Y'all, I told you earlier, they met, he met a diseased woman. Come on. And then he met a dead girl. Oh, y'all ain't with me today. I, I told you earlier that Jesus had power to deliver, to heal, and to raise. Come on. Let's take a look at the power to deliver. The Bible says, I don't know where y'all gonna jump on it. <laughs> but the text says that when he got out of that book and got over to the other side, the Bible says that when he got there, here comes a demon. Isn't it bad that the demon know God more than the Christian know God? Uh, because the demon, come on, y'all got to be with me here. The Bible says that uh, the demon comes shaking and trembling. Come on, somebody. And the Bible even talks about when the demon came shaking and trembling. Uh, the Bible says now that Jesus, Jesus gets up and he said, here it is. The demon want to speak, y'all. Have you ever been in a church and the demon want to show up? The demon want to start speaking. Come on, somebody. The text says that uh, when he showed up, here it is. The demon said, uh, what do you have to do with us? He said, we ain't bothering nobody. You are bothering somebody. You bothering this man that want to be set free. Come on, somebody. The demon said, who are you and what is your name? So you got to learn how to look at something in the face and say, who are you and what are you doing here? You got power on the inside of you. Somebody say, I got some power. But the text says that Jesus now, I can't stay that long, y'all. I got to move. Listen, he says in the text, what do you have to do with us? He said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion meaning many of them he said look look, look what the demon said lord we know I, let me back up because i like this because the bible says that this demon had enough sense to reverence god y'all don't believe me and we come into church every sunday and want to sit down on our rusty dusty and not run oh y'all y'all didn't come to have church y'all didn't come to have church because we came to have some church and don't want to reverence god we come in here and we sit on and cross our legs and act like the world owed us something. Your neighbor say good morning and you don't want to say good morning back. Somebody coming in here looking all kinds of way. Listen, 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 listen. So the demon began to speak and he reverenced God. He went down on his knees. Y'all check me out. I'm in Mark chapter 5. He went down on his knees. And he said, Lord, he said, whatever you do, don't see, let, just send me to the, send me out there somewhere. The Bible said that God looked over and saw some pigs. Come on, somebody. And he sent the demons to the pig. Come on. God will get rid of your demon. Why don't you look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, God will get rid of my demon. Not only, not, I'm almost done, Pastor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Listen, not only did God deal with a demon man, but the text also says that God here in the text, uh, he didn't just meet the demon man. I'm going to get to it, y'all, just a minute. I know it ain't over till God says it over. Because one of the things that God did for the demon man, he, uh, he delivered him. He called that demon out of him. And he said, this is what I want you to do. I preached the sermon before. Uh, this part of the sermon was totally different, but I preached a family and friend day. Uh -huh. Because God says in the text, he said, go home and show your family and your friends what the Lord has done for you. See, y'all think it's arrogant. Come on, somebody. Y'all think we're being boastful. But the Bible even says that you should boast about how good God is. If you know God woke you up this morning, you ought to stand up on your feet and say, he did it for me. If you know God healed your body, you ought to stand up on your feet 
and say, honey, he did it for me. And, oh, God, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready yet. Okay, we're going to go in a minute. Listen, I got I to gotta sit down. But the text says, the text says that he, he went out. One of the first things I saw about this text, y'all got to, I hope y'all write and I hope somebody tape it because you got to hear it. Because now, here it is. The demon, the man now had fame. Because everybody was standing back going, who is that? Is that the guy that was sitting in the graveyard? Y'all know how we do. That don't look like him. I remember when, come on somebody. Y'all know when God delivers you, people can't get over your path. Listen. I gotta go. I gotta go. Listen. Not only did he deal with a demon man, but then the Bible even talks about him dealing with a uh, diseased woman. Now, in the text, in the text, now you gotta watch the order of the text. Because before he dealt with the diseased woman, that was what you call a distraction. And this was the desperate father. Before the demon woman came, the desperate father came. The father said, wait a minute. I heard from the demon man that you were in town and I'm desperate right now. Y'all know how we get when our children, come on somebody. You know our children can be bad as I don't know what, but you better not mess with them. Come on somebody. You better not say one word to them. Come on y'all. This man was desperate. Somebody say a desperate daddy. This daddy was desperate. This baby was 12 years old. It was not yet her time. Somebody said, wait a minute, elder God can do what he can want to do. No, he can't. He only have to do what he said in the word. If he do anything beside, outside of the word, it makes him a liar. And he said, am I the son of man that I should lie? This girl was just 12. Come on, somebody. So the daddy was going to God on her, on her behalf. But before he really dealt with the desperate daddy, he had to deal with, come on y'all, he had to deal with the diseased woman. Oh my God, come on somebody. You ought to look at yourself and say, thank God I'm free. Come on somebody. Here it is. Here it is, this diseased woman. This was what you called a uh, 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 distraction. Because he was on his way to Jaharia's house. He was with the desperate daddy. But you don't know how it is. That's what I'm telling you. You have to come to church with your mind on God. Amen. 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 You have to put your mind on God. I'll tell you, I said I wasn't going to use you today, but let me use you just a little bit. Go to the back for me. Uh, the Bible says that here it is, here it is, here it is. And if y'all don't mind, if you, if, you, if you just ain't too cute, can somebody just stand in the aisle? You ain't got to get cold. Just stand in the aisle right here, mother. Just stand right there. Sir, just stand in the aisle right there. There you go. You can face this way, mother. Amen. Listen. The Bible says that he dealt now with this de diseased woman. And in the Bible days that uh, whenever you had a disease, come on somebody, yeah. Yeah. if you had leopard or any kind of disease, you could not come from the back to the front. Amen. Yeah. You had to stay in the back. But how many know we're living in a season that we don't have to stay in the back of the line in them? The text says that here it is, this woman said, I, I understand that the, uh, this man is desperate, but I'm desperate too. Listen here, I'm bad all the way around. This woman says, wait a minute, I got, I got a bad situation. I got bad health. Number one, she says, I got bad health. And uh, number two, she says, I done got some bad advice. Y'all know the word says that she went to the doctor. And the doctor said, hey, ain't nothing else I can do to you. That's a bad advice. And then number three, she said, not only do I have bad health, and not only do I have uh, bad advice, but Lord, my pocketbook is bad. I don't have any money. The Bible said because she spent all she had. Oh, y'all ain't ready. The Bible said, but one thing I do have is I have a man named Jesus. And I don't mean to break the rules here. 
but uh, I got to get past these people because if I can just get past the people, there you go, Tay, if I can just get past somebody and just touch the hem of his garment, come on, somebody, I'll get back on to the place that I needed to be in. There they go, but you keep on coming past. Come on, you just keep on coming past them because all you're trying to do is get to Jesus. Is anybody trying to get to Jesus? If She's trying to get to Jesus. The Bible says that when she got to Jesus, the Bible said that she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said that when she touched, all power went from God to Jesus. Somebody say, I got power. Anybody got some power? Anybody got power to lay hand on the sick? Anybody got power? Oh, God. I, I'm sorry, Pastor. I promise you I'm going to get out of here. Listen, 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 listen. We got to go, y'all. We just having a good time. We got to go. But listen, the Bible says that he dealt with the demon. Thank you, Tay. He dealt with the demon man. Then he dealt with the diseased woman. But then it also said, here come the desperate daddy. Say, wait a minute now, Jesus. I came. I came. I came. I came to you first. Now, you don't, you don't delay what I wanted. But how many know that delay don't mean deny? See, let me help, let me help you. Let me help you. Because I teach, them, I teach this to my ladies. Y'all, I have crazy kind of faith. My husband, I tell you. My husband, let me tell you, I have that crazy kind of faith. I'm believing, and my husband believing. We just believe the word of God. Yeah. God says that he's given us three scores and ten, if by reason, uh, uh, four scores, which is eight. Yeah. Well, we're not there yet. So we don't accept death. Yeah. Now, I know some of you say, Elder, that's crazy. No, it ain't. I put it back on God. So my husband became ill, and he became ill with COVID. Come on, somebody. And he was really sick. Amen. We, we just wasn't saying anything. He was sick. But he didn't want to go to the hospital. And everybody said, how in the world did you stay in a house with a man that had COVID and you didn't get COVID? I said, I took a prescription every day. Yeah. She'll tell you. She said, what prescription did you take? I said, Psalms 91, no evil shall befall me. Not any place come near my dwelling. I stood on it. I won't be moved by what I see. And I definitely won't be moved by what I hear. And I won't be moved by what they say. But I'm only moved by the word of God. Y'all better come on. This woman. You, this woman here. This woman. I say if she could get here, my husband could get here. He couldn't, he couldn't pray for himself, so he had me praying. And I pulled on him. He said, I pulled him up. I said, listen. I'm going to put you outside every day. He said, man, got no strength. I said, well, I got your strength. God has given me power yeah. to lay hand on the sick. Yeah. And the sick got to recover. Yeah. And my husband's a big guy. I pulled him out every day. Every day for seven days. Right. Set him in the sun. His, he had pneumonia. He was on the verge of having a heart attack. Listen, his chest was booming. But he didn't want to go to the hospital. And I asked him every day, I said, do you believe? He said, I'm a, believe, I'm a believer. I said, are you in connection with me? He said, what are you saying? I said, well, the scripture says two or three come together, touch it, and agree it. God is in the midst of us. I said, you ain't got to pray. I got you. Every day, he, he, he dragging, holding. I believe that's what probably was wrong with my shoulder because he's dragging. He's a big guy. But my job was to get him outside. I got him outside every day. I pulled him dragging and pulling him by the arm and set him in the sun. I set him down from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every night and cleaned my house every day. And I didn't just physical clean the house, I spiritual cleaned it. I opened every window and I command every devil in hell to get out. And I call my husband from life to de from death to life. Come on somebody. And this is, this is how the desperate daddy was. The daddy says, my son, can I, my daughter, cannot pray. The Bible says uh, that when she, when he saw Jesus, 
uh, the Bible says that he was having a conversation with Jesus. And he said, Brother Jesus, can you come on to my daughter? The Bible says, y'all watch this. The Bible says that why he was having a conversation with Jesus. The Bible says, here come all the naysayers. And here come all the martyrs. And said, uh, uh, brought Jairus, don't bother the man of God anymore. Uh, because your daughter is already dead. <laughs> Your daughter is already dead. Uh, Jairus didn't respond to the naysayers. And Jairus didn't respond to the mourners. But Jairus responded to Jesus. Oh, y'all, we got to get out of here. The Bible said that when Jairus uh, looked at Jesus, Jesus looked back at Jairus and said, Jairus, don't worry about it. He said, don't listen to them. See, y'all got to learn to turn a deaf ear. Uh, because somebody don't want to see you make it. I told my husband, he said, sure, I need you to call somebody and pray for me. And I said, uh-uh, baby, everybody can't pray for you. Because the ones that you want me to call, they still pray if it be thy will. Well, that lets me know that if you're still praying, if it be thy will, that you don't know the will. Because if you knew the oh my God, y'all ain't ready. I got to get out of here. But the Bible says uh, that J. Harris, uh, Jesus looked at J. Harris, and he said, J. Harris, I know that there was a, a distraction. And J. Harris, I understand that there was a delay. He said, but Jairus, come on and let's go home now. He said uh, to Jairus, he said, I'm going to your house. Uh, somebody said, it ain't over. So God says it's over. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, it sure ain't over. So God says it's over. The Bible said that they went to Jairus' house. And when they got to Jairus' house, the Bible said, oh, wait a minute. Before I go in the house, he said, all oh, y'all can go. See, there's some people that's walking with you, and they don't need to go with you. The Bible said, wait a minute. Let me pick the people that can go. Come on, pastor. He said, come on, pastor. Come on with me, pastor. He said, I'm going to take some people with me. Some people that know how to pray. Come on, deacon over here. He said, I got to take the right people that know how to pray. Come on, mother, and get on board, mother. Come on and get on board. Because everybody can't go to your house. See, that's the problem, y'all. You've been taking everybody to your house. But you can't take everybody to your house. The Bible says they were on the way to the house. They started to the house. They started to go in the house. But when they got to the house, uh, there was some no people in the house. The Lord said, kick them out. Come on, somebody. These people are what you call mourners. These were professional mourners. See, everybody ain't crying, right? Real tears. But these people were what you call professional mourners. Mother, they were not crying real tears. They were actually glad she was dead. Y'all ain't ready. The Bible says that when they get to the house, he put the mourners out. But how many know when Jesus showed up, everybody can't be in the house. The Bible said Jesus stepped over in the house. And when he stepped in the house, the Bible says that when he stepped, sit down for me, when he stepped in the house, the Bible said there was a daughter that lay dead. Come on. But how many know that every dead situation got to get up in your life? How many know that you cannot come in contact with Jesus and remain the same? You ought to lay hand on yourself and declare that you're getting up. You're getting up from troubles. You're getting up from heartaches. You're getting up from a bad marriage. You're getting up go from financial problems. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting up out of this thing. The Bible said, I'm almost done, I'm going home. The text says that when he got there and he looked over at the young lady, the first thing he did to her, the Bible said that he grabbed her hand. 
How many know that Jesus will hold your hand? How many know that when you're down to nothing, God is up to something? Won't he do it? Won't he hold your hand? The text says that not only did he hold a hand, but then the Bible says, because let me tell you how people do you. They'll come to your house, they'll eat your food, and they'll hold your hand, but they won't help you up. The text says that Jesus held the hand, and then he began to help her up. How many need God, need, need God to help him up? Why don't you lay hands on yourself and say, Lord, I need you to help me. Now watch this text, y'all, because he did not just hold her hand, and he did not just hold her up. But the Bible says that he healed her body because when she got up, she was still in a death situation. The Bible says, he said, I tell y'all what y'all got to do. He said, y'all got to go find some food. He said, y'all got to give her some food so that we can restore her back. Come on, somebody. Y'all got to feed her. Now, some of y'all think that was physical food, but that was spiritual food. How many know that the word will keep you? How many know that the word will wake you up? How many know that the word will heal your body? If you know the man, you ought to begin. I know the man. He healed my body. He woke me up. He turned me around. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he heal your body? Won't he put running in your feet? Won't he put cuffing in your head? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He'll make a way. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. Lay hand on yourself and say, God will make a way. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't over. So God says it's over. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't over. So God says it's over. Lay hands if you can and say, it ain't over. So God says it's over. You ought to shout right here. You ought to give God some praise. You ought to jump up and down. You ought to say it ain't over. So God says it's over. If you love the Lord, I need you to jump one time. If you love the Lord, I need you to jump two times. But if you really love the Lord, I need you to keep on jumping and let God know. Anybody really love him? How many know that it ain't over? How many know? Somebody counted you out. But God said, I'm counting you in. Somebody thought you were dead. But God said, you yet alive. That's enough to give God a praise. Woo! I'm done. I'm done but he's a good God yes he is the man in the text y'all from nothing to fame everybody start talking about it everybody start talking about it he went from nothing to fame the woman in the text went from unbelief to faith she had crazy kind of faith. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And then the girl in the text went from death to life. And in other words, she had favor. All of us got favor on our life. But if you read Mark chapter 5, 
You'll notice in the text, and I'm sorry I got ahead of the text, but you'll notice that in the text, all God was saying, just believe. He said, do not be afraid, but just believe. Now the enemy go mess with you. The enemy was messing with my husband. He wanted to give up, Pastor. But I kept sowing. I kept feeding him the word. Physical food was all right. We don't need a plate full of physical food to live. Come on. We only need just a little bit. Anything else we're doing with glutton, I'm, I'm guilty of glutton. Anything else we're doing, we don't take but a little bit. I didn't feed Claude, but just a little bit of food. But I fed him a plate full of word. I know God will heal your body. I know God will raise you up. And I know he'll deliver you. I was in a box of mat with the devil, y'all. I worked for several doctors, and I was calling them. I said, listen, something going on. They said, Charlotte, he feel like he got, it sounded like he got a little anxiety going on. Besides the chest pain, they diagnosed him with COVID pneumonia. They said, but now, it sound like he got a, uh, anxiety. I was like, well, I get in this boxing match, I'm gonna jump over in this ring. I'm gonna fight this thing. And I know God did not prepare us for a physical fight. That's why he said we don't fight against flesh and blood. So when I got in the boxing mat, I mean I was casting down everything that came up against. And I had to let the devil know, wait a minute, I ain't scared of you. Greater is he. I got greater on the inside of me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got greater on the inside of me. That's why it ain't over. Till God says it's over. Give God a hand clap of praise. I'm done.